Hey again everybody, it's James from Palmer Hamilton Fab Labs. Today we are going to go over Autodesk Tinkercad Basics. So we're just going to go through menu options, how to create a new project, and what's within those project menus. So if you look in the top right over here, this is what it's going to look like after you log in. So if you haven't created an account, do so. Pause the video, come back to this, and then you'll see all of this. It will take you through a tutorial once you create the account. So in the top right, we have classes, gallery, blog, learn, teach, and then you have your photo if you select one. If not, you'll just have a generic thing there. So there's some other options over here on the left here. You can search designs. There's 3D designs, circuits, code blocks, lessons. You can create a project. Uh, and then there's tweets here as well that Tinkercad retweets. Uh, then if we go over here, you have your gallery. So any designs you make will be in this gallery. And then in the bottom, you have about support, uh, their social media and their logo. So we're gonna go into a design. Uh, before we do that, we're just gonna hit create new design. You'll get that loading menu, then you get a work plane, similar to this. So we'll go over some options here. Now, if you don't want to use your mouse to navigate through all of the different views and whatnot, notice when I move my work plane in the top left over here, it's also moving. So what does that tell me? I can come over here and I can click certain parts of this cube and it's going to bring me to that part of the cube or I can drag the cube so I click and hold I can move the cube around as if it's its own three-dimensional object and I can go through and find different angles that I want to look at it's very useful if you're trying to see around an object or if you want to make sure that everything on your object looks good 360 because remember when you're printing this it is a three-dimensional object so every angle matters on the left here you have a few different buttons and we'll go through them the home view is going to bring you back to the view when you load a project so it's going to bring you to the front top front so angled such like this so if I hit front and then I hit home view it's going to bring me back to that this fit all in view if I were to have objects on here so let's say I have an object here two objects and I have both of them selected but you can see in the bottom right my right object is not fitting in the view it will adjust your view so you can see all the shapes this is very important when you get into larger projects but we're not going to go through that too much. Uh, while we're here, I'll show you what the undo button does. Up here, you have copy. So if I wanted to copy this and then paste it, I'd have two similar objects, right? If I wanted to duplicate and repeat, which is essentially what copy is. However, duplicate and repeat does uh, similar functions, but you can do parametrics with this so if I hit duplicate and repeat and then I move this object and I duplicate and repeat it it's going to do the same distance that I moved the original copy from if I wanted to delete something I could hit delete or I could hit delete so then you have undo and redo just like you're writing a paper right so we hit undo it'll bring back our deleted object. If I hit redo, it'll delete it. But we're gonna undo all of these until we get our blank slate again. Then we're gonna hit home view and we're back. You can also use zoom in and zoom out over here or you can use your mouse wheel to do that. I like to use my mouse wheel because you can get a little more accurate touches. The zoom feature will do it uh, like a snap zoom it's not going to be as accurate as a mouse wheel 
And let's go over the shapes. So over here on the right, if you hit this drop down menu, you have basic shapes, texted numbers, characters, connectors, OMSI hangout space, which is just creating a little hangout space, which I'm assuming is based off of OMSI. There's shape generators, there's featured, and then there's all. Keep that in mind. The featured is just going to have a few that they have selected, and then the all will have every shape generator in there. You can bring a map in here if you wanted to, or you could do circuits. There's 3D printed circuits. So this is an option as well. And then if we go down to printable kits, there's a dinosaur and a skeleton that you can assemble. You bring all the pieces in. This might be a good lesson for anatomy. Dinosaurs, you can bring those in and assemble it later. Pieces just snap together. And then you have your favorites. So if you've favorited something, like for some reason an egg hole, or if you have found parts. I saved some parts from something that somebody had made. This is to create a hinge. All three parts were needed. So I imported the parts. And then you can have shape generators if you want to create your own shapes. So what was I talking about importing parts? Well, up here you have the import, export, and send to. So if I wanted to import a part that I found from Thingiverse or something like that, that's where I found that hinge, I would import it and it would bring it onto my work plane. I could then select the object, go to part collection. I could create a part and here's my part. I can rename it, give it a description, uh, put some tags on it. I can lock the part size if I don't want it to be scaled. That might be good if it's like the hinge. The hinge is, uh, you might not want it to scale. You need it to, it'll only work for a certain size. Then there's the export. So when you export something, you can do it for a 3D print or you can do it for laser cutting. The files that it creates for a 3D print are a object file, STL, or a GLTF. Okay. And then if you have a 3D printer, that you uh, are connected to, you can send it to one of these printers. Now another feature, which we're not gonna go too far into detail about, is the work plane. So if I have an object on here, I want something to sit perfectly on top of it, I'm gonna click work plane, and then it creates me a second work plane. This down here is my original work plane, and then I have my new one right here. Now, once I get my object on it that I want, I can click work plane again, click away from the new work plane, it'll bring you back to the old one, and voila. Now, there's a ruler function as well. So, you can see it gives you measurements based on a point. So, let's say I get this lined up here right on my object anything that works off of this object will now have a measurement so if I move this it's telling me how far I am from zero on that ruler it's also gonna tell me how far I am from the object the original object so if I select these it's gonna give me the total length it's gonna give me the total width the height total and if I wanted to move these together I can move them together but the ruler is really good when you're working in uh, parametrics and you are also keeping things spaced a certain distance or you just need to know in general how much space you have to fill between objects we're going to dismiss the ruler by clicking X we're going to go to home view 
select our object and delete it. Now down here we have edit grid. That's in the bottom right. You can switch your grid from millimeters, inches, and bricks. And when you change something, so this is 20 by 20, right? We go to edit grid. We select inches, update the grid. It is now going to be in inches. So everything you do gets converted. You might have to work in inches or you need to work in millimeters and switch back and forth. That is how you would do that. Another feature in the edit grid is the uh, presets. So I could set the presets to a certain 3D printer that I have. So let's say I'm a Palmer Hamilton Fab Lab. I've got a Dremel 3D 45. I update my grid. It will update your grid to your work plane that you have in your 3D printer. So you have a build area that you can't max out on your 3d45 right well here you go if you wanted to create an object that fit within that workspace this is how you would do it you could also manually do it you can update the width and length yourself uh, for me for example I created a tie and I had to create a large work plane because it was about 20 inches long so it was a very narrow work plane but very long, not so wide. And that's about it for those features. I'll update the grid back to the default. If I wanted to rename my project, I would put it here. So we can call it Tinkercad Ooh. Tutorial. I can just simply tap Enter. And now my object's renamed. As you saw, it gives you kind of weird, funky names. I can also come over here and I can create bricks, AKA Legos, but you can't say they're Legos because that's trademarked. But this is how you would do it. So if I wanted to create something like that, I would do it in here. And then there's a what's new. And then you can add a collaborator to your design. So I can invite somebody I can generate a link and somebody can collaborate with me on a design that I'm doing, which is really good. It's useful. Some other items I've mentioned that I did not mention earlier on are the controls. So you can use keyboard and mouse or you can use the controls up here. I prefer keyboard and mouse. So uh, a left click and drag will select multiple objects. So if I have two objects in here. I can select both of them by left clicking and dragging over both of them. The delete key on your keyboard will delete those objects. Okay. The right mouse click and hold and then dragging will move your work plane around the same way it would if I were to use the cube, right? So right click, hold, and that's how you'll do that. Now let's say I have an object here. I want to duplicate it. I could hit Control D. How did I know to hit Control D? Well, I go up here and it tells me what the hotkeys are. Control C copies. Control V paste. Control D duplicates and repeats. So I can duplicate and repeat. Delete. Ooh. Obviously, we just said delete something and then undo just like Microsoft Word. You hit Control Z and it undoes. Those are the basic functions of the keyboard and mouse. I think I've covered everything. This is lesson one of the Tinkercad videos for how to's in Tinkercad.